In today's video, I'll give you a first look at my initial impressions on Sony's latest G Master lens, the 24-70 f2.8 G Master Mark II. This is Sony's 67th E-mount lens, and they've taken a lot of their lens-making prowess and applied it to this updated lens. The headline here is that Sony has created the smallest and lightest lens in its class while adding a bunch of performance enhancements that make using this lens a lot of fun. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's start with the lens design. The new 24-70 G Master lens is noticeably smaller than the Mark I version of the lens, coming in at 119.9 millimeters compared to 136 millimeters. The Mark II version has been working on its summer bot as well, coming in at only 695 grams compared to 886 grams with the original 24 to 70. On paper, it may not seem like much, but holding both lenses, I can tell you that it feels significantly lighter. If you're a wedding or event photographer who puts in long hours using a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, your back and shoulders will definitely appreciate it. When you combine these benefits of having a smaller, lighter weight 24 to 70 millimeter lens, it also makes it a great option to use on something like a gimbal. We'll go more into the video features in a few moments. Looking at the lens itself, you'll notice that Sony has incorporated an aperture ring into the design that can be declicked using this switch right here. On that same side of the lens, there is a new switch here to select between smooth and tight operation. Setting this to smooth makes the lens zoom in and out smooth, as the name might suggest. So if you're wanting to quickly zoom in and out throughout the entire 24 to 70 millimeter focal range for any kind of fast action shoots, this will be the way to go. Changing this to tight, however, does something pretty cool. It makes the lens a bit harder to zoom and the only way that I can relate that here in a video is to liken it to a tripod with a fluid head. When you're adjusting your zoom, the lens gives you a little bit of resistance. I found this feature to be helpful for shooting video where you can get a really nice zooming effect like you're seeing in this example here. Moving on, you'll find two focus hold buttons compared to just the one that you'll find on the Mark I version of the lens. You could customize the operation of this button in your camera menu, and with this new layout, you could easily access the button in either landscape or portrait orientations. Finally, you've got an AF slash MF switch for switching between focusing modes and an iris lock to keep your aperture ring from accidentally moving out of the A setting on the lens. Even the lens hood has been redesigned, giving you a small sliding window for you to access and adjust your circular polarizer or neutral density filters. Comparing this lens to the original 24 to 70, you'll find a bunch of updates that really shine when you're pairing it up with Sony's latest camera bodies like the Alpha One. Sony has added their Nano AR2 coating, which does an amazing job at reducing flare and ghosting. They've also added a fluorine front element coating that repels water, oil, and other contaminants, not to mention that the lens is also dust and moisture resistant. Chromatic aberration has also been reduced, which was an issue that I've personally seen with other 24 to 70 millimeter lenses out on the market. The big update here is the addition of four extreme dynamic linear motors with a floating focus mechanism. What's all that mean? Essentially, you get amazing autofocus performance up to 30 frames per second with accurate focus tracking even when you're zooming. Focusing is also dead silent, making this a great option for video. Speaking of video, let's talk about some of the improvements in that arena. Let's say you're wanting to do what's called a focus pull, where you shift focus from one object to the next. In a pro video situation, you'd use something like this follow focus and set a mark for each spot where you want to pull focus. Using the original 24 to 70, you'll notice that when I set those marks and I try to pull focus, it doesn't quite work right. With the new 24 to 70, which features linear response autofocus, you could set multiple focus points, mark them, and feel confident that the focus points won't shift as you move from one mark to the next. Focus breathing has also been minimized as shown here in this clip. I had the opportunity to do a few shoots with the lens as well and was really impressed with the overall performance. Over on my personal YouTube channel, you can watch the complete behind the scenes video from my shoot with Caitlin, but here are a few images from that shoot along with some stills that I took later that week with Diana.
In my opinion and in initial testing, the autofocus improvements alone make this a worthy upgrade, but you'll definitely want to check this lens out when it becomes available. Pricing and pre-order information will be linked in the description. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe and like this video as there's a lot more to come. Now, be sure to check out the video that you see here on the screen, and I'll see you next time.